Hi, welcome to the GIE author interview series. My name is Vivek Sandeep Chandrasekhar and I'm a second year gastroenterology and hepatology fellow at the University of Kansas Medical Center in Kansas City. I would like to give you an introduction and brief overview of our paper in GIE titled Kohlsner Endoscopic Resection of Non-Pedunculated Colorectal Polyps Larger Than 10 mm: A Systematic Review and Pooled Analysis. A brief background on why we decided to do this study. Colorectal cancer is a leading cause of mortality and it has been established that resection of polyps decreases mortality. The ideal method of resection of larger than 10 millimeter non pedunculated polyps is still unclear. The European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy recommends hot snare polypectomy for 10 to 19 millimeter polyps, but this is based on low quality evidence. And for polyps larger than 20 millimeter, they recommend endoscopic mucosal resection, which is injection of a submucosal substance to raise the polyp and then the use of electrocautery to help with the resection. This is otherwise called the conventional or hot EMR. Among the American societies like ASGE, ACG, and AGA, there's no consensus statement. Hot smear resections allow easier polypectomy by helping with the transection of the tissue, ablation of the residual tissue margins of the polypectomy, and also decrease in the incidence of immediate or intraprocedural bleeding. But on the flip side, the adverse effects would be delayed post-polypectomy bleeding, post-polypectomy syndrome, and also uh, the incidence of perforation is higher. The uh, hypothesis uh, with Kohlsner resections is that there would be less incidence of uh, delayed bleeding, uh, but is it at the cost of efficacy? Well, in the last five years, there's been accumulating evidence of the use of cold snare resections for larger than 10 millimeter polyps. And uh, they've shown a better safety profile with good efficacy too. To date, there are no randomized controlled trials comparing cold snare resection with hot snare resection for these polyps. And that is the reason why we decided to do this systematic review. We did a database search and included studies which uh, reported using cold snare techniques for resection of these polyps. That would include both cold snare polypectomy and cold EMR. And the polyps resected using these techniques were either sessile Paris type 1S polyps or type 2A and type 2B non pedunculated polyps. And we excluded any studies or polyps that used uh, electrocautery to help with the resection or any adjuvant techniques like the use of snare tube coagulation or APC. Our primary outcome was the incidence of adverse events, which included intraprocedural or immediate bleeding, post-procedural or delayed bleeding, post-polypectomy abdominal pain, and perforation. And for secondary outcomes, we look for a technical success, which is the complete macroscopic resection of the polyp, and also the residual polyp rate at the first follow-up colonoscopy. We also did a subgroup analysis based on polyp size as to less than 2 cm and more than 2 cm with the above outcomes. And also we did an analysis for studies which uh, used only the EMR technique for resection of these polyps. I would like to hand over to Marcus Paracini, one of my co-authors in this manuscript, for further overview of the results and the discussion section. Thanks Vivek for the introduction. I'm Marco Spadaccini and I'm a fellow at Humanitas Research Hospital in Milan. According to our pooled analysis, Cosner resection is highly encouraging for polyps larger than 10 mm, as shown by more than 99% rate of complete resection, coupled with low rate of residual polyps and extremely low risk of adverse events. We reviewed the available literature and eight studies, including 522 lesions, were finally analyzed. To study at the prospective design, to Australian experiences by Totici and Tate, and the other six were retrospective. Of note, the mean lesion size was 70.5 mm, with lesions up to 6 cm. Considering adverse events as our main outcome, we found the rate of intraprocedural bleeding after all cosmetic resection being 0.7%, and a little more for polyps larger than 2 cm. 
This low rate suggests that cold snaring may not confer an increased risk of immediate bleeding, despite avoiding the instant vascular coagulation provided by the hot technique. In particular, for cold EMR, when speculating on the possible reasons of such low risk, the focus could rely on submucosal injection. Even if the ideal injectate for cold EMR is unknown, its role in minimizing intraprocedural oozing providing tamponade to the capillaries could deserve dedicated studies. Considering other safety outcomes, although randomized controlled trials would be required, if we do compare our results with previous meta-analysis on conventional polypectomy in DMR, cosnaring appears to be substantially safer. Both the lack of perforation and the presence of a single episode of delayed bleeding after more than 500 polyps resected demonstrates the potential of cosnaring to significantly reduce the adverse events. Further, Added benefit of skull snaring may be both the cost and the shorter time for resection, because of the lack of need of electrocautery machine, a lower need for prophylactic clip placement. Indeed, with cold snare resection there is no coagulator escar formation, thus significantly reducing the delayed bleeding from sloughing. As a matter of fact, Rates of post-procedural bleeding ranging from 2 to 6% have been reported in literature for standard EMR. In our pool analysis, the procedural bleeding rate was lower than 1%. The second main result of our analysis is the efficacy profile, suggesting that electrocautery is perhaps not mandatory to achieve polyps eradication. In particular, data on salts and rated polyps are really interesting. Their residual rate was 1% in our analysis, even for lesion larger than 2 cm. This seems to be lower than the one reported in previous series, with rates ranging from 7 to 8.7%. In fact, although the important precursor for colorectal cancer, the salts and rated polyps have lower risk for recurrence and dysplasia than adenomas. They are therefore potentially suitable to be resected by an endoscopic technique with low risk of adverse events. In conclusion, we do believe that this technique holds the potential to aid in the resection of large polyps. While awaiting more reliable data, including of course randomized controlled trial for comparison with standard techniques, our study suggests that cold snaring can be an alternative to both hot snare polypectomy and conventional hot EMR for resection of colonic polyps larger than 10 mm. On behalf of my co-authors, I thank all of you for watching this video and I welcome all viewers to see our article in gastrointestinal endoscopy.